Good morning. This is Kelloland on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. One man is dead in a homicide in downtown Rapid City. Police say officers were called to the area off Main Street just after 3 o'clock local time Thursday morning. Police were able to find and arrest 32-year-old Michael Flores Jr. for first-degree murder as a result of their investigation. It doesn't appear that it was random. Uh, uh, there, th there's no indication that there should be any concerns from the public for ongoing public safety issues. So uh, we believe we have the people involved uh, amongst the group that we've already been talking to this morning. We'll share more information about the homicide investigation as it becomes available. Sioux Falls Police helped the FBI track down five fugitives and at least two of suspects that may be linked to international crimes. Together, five people are accused of stealing from businesses in at least 11 states and two countries. Court records show the crimes span from California to Iowa, Texas and Florida. The search for the suspects ended on Wednesday afternoon in downtown Sioux Falls near the corner of 8th and Reed where police arrested five people. One of the suspects seen here in this surveillance video is accused of stealing $100,000 worth of jewelry from a store in California. And that's not all. The FBI was unable to comment on the arrest because it's an active investigation. A trial date is set for next year in Joseph Hook's case. He's charged with killing Moody County Chief Deputy Sheriff Ken Prorock last February. Lead prosecutor and South Dakota Attorney General Marty Jackley spoke with the media after the brief hearing in Flandreau. Uh, we are here for Officer Ken Prorock's case. Uh, we had a hearing this morning in which the court has indicated and set a trial date beginning April 21 of 2025. It will be a five-week trial. The defense had filed a motion for further evaluations. Um, the court, uh, the state did not object and the court granted that. Pro Rock was 51 years old. If you'd like to see this sign memorializing him, you'll be able to find it on Highway 34 west of Interstate 29. Now let's get our first check of the forecast with meteorologist Scott Munt. Good morning, Scott. All right, good morning, Perry. Good morning, everybody. Another round of heavy rain expected for this evening and tonight. Before then, we could see strong to severe thunderstorms try to set up across south central and the southeastern South Dakota late this afternoon and for this evening. Flood watch will continue into early tomorrow morning covering south central, eastern South Dakota, Minnesota, and northwestern Iowa. I'll have more details on your forecast coming up. All right, thanks, Scott. The Butterfly House and Aquarium's new touch pool is now open for people to get their hands on. The new exhibit features species native to the East Coast. It also made more accessible for guests. After months of renovations, staff are excited for people to come and check it out. The touch pool is a really wonderful experience for our guests here at the Butterfly House and Aquarium. You know, it's one thing to look in an aquarium and see aquatic creatures, but it's quite another to be able to, you know, reach in and actually touch them and have that, you know, experience, that tactile experience. And for some people, that can be a life-changing experience. The touch pool is open right now from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Thursday through Sundays. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has awarded the Vermilion Summer Lunch Program the Gold Level Turn Up the Beat Award. Vermilion is one of 140 districts in the country to win the honor, and this is the fourth year in a row that the program has earned that recognition. I think that it sets a standard that we uh, are striving to do our best and continue to, to uphold the, the gold medal honor. Lunch is served every week every weekday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and anyone 18 and under can eat for free. Feeding South Dakota has nearly as many volunteers as employees in its building on any given day. The CHS Brandon team was packing potatoes and onions to be handed out through Feeding South Dakota's mobile food distribution. The farmer-owned cooperative also made a donation of more than $21,000. It's part of the money CHS raises each March for its Harvest for Hunger program. Our paychecks aren't going as far and we know that there's even more people out there that are food insecure and, and need that money. And we were really surprised and thrilled that we were able to collect so much money this year. Feeding South Dakota explains why this was a timely donation as part of its story on Killoland.com. 
Let's look at some of our top stories. Now let's get our last look at the weather with me, Scott Munn. Good morning, Scott. All right, good morning, everybody. We continue with that flood watch into tomorrow morning. Uh, an additional two to four inches can be expected. Some spots, uh, unfortunately, will get more than that. And we are also watching these developing showers and thunderstorms this morning. Right along the border in Nebraska and South Dakota, they are in the southeastern South Dakota, and they will continue to travel to the northeast during the morning and early afternoon. Once we get into the late afternoon and early evening, we'll see if we get any of these individual thunderstorm cells to develop because some of these will quickly become strong to severe if they're able to get going. And then for the evening overnight, late evening into the overnight, we'll have another widespread area of heavy rain here across eastern South Dakota, Minnesota, and northwestern Iowa. That will move to the east by Saturday morning. We'll have clearing skies try to make their way in here during the day as we go through the day for tomorrow and Sunday is looking dry. As I mentioned before, any of those cells that do develop may become severe as we do have this slight risk for severe weather in south central and eastern and southeastern Kelloland. Now for today, the temperatures will range from the middle 80s where this warm front, which is the focal point for the stronger weather, where the warm front extends uh, to the south of that, we'll have our numbers into the 80s. Now north of that, uh, we'll probably have temperatures into the 70s for today. Keep in mind the heavy rain again tonight in eastern southeastern Kelloland. And then for tomorrow, we'll try to bring in clearing skies as we do go through the day. You can always check the details of the seven-day forecast while you're here online. Have a good day.